आदाब मैं हूं मारूफ रजाब तहजीब टीवी में आपका खैर मकदम है रूबरू में आज मेरे साथ वो शख्सियत है जो हिंदुस्तान में रहते तो थे लेकिन अब अमेरिका में है आजमगढ़ से अमेरिका का सफर उन्होंने तय किया और बहुत बुलंदी और कामयाबियों को छुआ उन्होंने आज वो मेरे साथ हैं जी हाँ मैं बात कर रहा हूँ फ्रेंक इस्लाम की खैर वक्त में आपका थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू स्पीक टू योर ऑडियंस एंड एंड थैंक यू फॉर ऑल यू डू योर डिफरेंस मेकर एंड एंड यू इंस्पायर ऑल ऑफ अस टू डू वॉ बट डू गड फ्रेंक हाउ वॉज द जर्नी फ्रॉम आजमगढ़ टू अमेरिका वेल आई वॉन्ट एड वन मोर थिंग्स my journey from azamgarh to aligarh, aligarh. to america yeah, yeah. So, so there are three a's three a's you yeah. got it very well said uh, so i um, i was uh, i was born in azamgarh and in a small village mm-hmm. and i have never lost love of azamgarh mm-hmm. uh, what's best in me i owe it to azamgarh and aligarh muslim university mm-hmm. my family was a very religious muslim family middle class family but i uh, i believe that the azamgarh remains to be a very tolerant city a city where we live to live side by side with the people from other faiths mm-hmm. and and then i went to very young age to aligarh muslim university mm-hmm. and aligarh muslim university is a beacon of hope for yeah. all over the world aspirations and dream mm-hmm. and you know aligarh muslim university is a precious possession aligarh shaped india india shaped aligarh mm-hmm. and i'm a fan of and love sir sayed ahmed khan and i would not be sitting over here talking to you yeah. or talking to this audience mm-hmm. if i have not gone to aligarh muslim university mm-hmm. and then after the i did not graduate from aligarh muslim university i went there and uh, and then uh, a professor came from from united states of america from university of colorado his name is professor thron okay and and he sort of uh, you know put me under his umbrella and i went to university of colorado and i always wanted to be business owner mm. and i started my business in 1994 mm. and I, i it was a 300 million dollar per year <coughs> it was a 3000 employees mm. so it's not me who made it successful it's we who made it happen and and i would also say that the uh uh is is my management team mm. uh that really made it successful and bus- and success in business is team sport yeah of course uh, everybody has to chip in mm. and so i hired the people who share my vision and values and now after i sold the business in 2007 to pro system corporation then i established a foundation my wife debbie and i is, is called frank islam uh debbie drasman foundation and i'm into giving mode giving back to the community mm. because that's what i enjoy the most I'm also guided by the words of President Kennedy who said to whom much is given much is expected. Yeah. But how do you become a, a, a Frank Islam? It's a very you can see a, a different name. Well, I would its origin. Well, first of all it's not a different name. <laughs> it's a unique name. Yeah. And I'm because I'm a uh, so what happened when I left uh, at such a young age to from uh, India to the United States my professor couldn't pronounce my name mm-hmm. my real name is Shah Fakhrul Islam wow. I come from a Shah family mm-hmm. a Sufi family and my brother is who is over here his name is Dr Shah Fazlul Islam and he is from he lives in Texas he's a doctor okay. and my whole family is in the United States uh, mm-hmm. my wife is an American so he said it was a pretty complicated so he changed it to frank but i did keep fakhrul islam okay. so uh, my name is frank fakhrul islam what do you know always here and there when you do find frank islam only oh uh, there well or because i changed it long years ago okay uh, so there was there was no trace of fakhrul islam you will find anywhere anymore mm-hmm. because if you do google search internet such as frank islam did you find any uh, uh, changes in india when you left this uh, country before how was the changes you find here well if depends where you go to i would say if you go back to the kaura gahani where i was born in azamgarh it hasn't changed that much they still live in stone ages okay but i would say the road is paved a little bit better and uh, and the people live a little bit better because they go to school and they have they send their children to the gulf countries and america so so there has been some changes i still think uh, i'll say this the muslims in the azamgarh uh, and the youth in particular uh see the the world which is the dark and desperate and desolate mm-hmm. uh, they live still in stone ages yeah. we need to empower them with education i want them to be frank islam uh, that, and that, that, be inspired a, by me this this is the same point i'm coming to you got the name fame money everything there in america what is your contribution uh, towards your village 
Yeah, well, that's a good question, Marov. Well, first of all, it's just not the village. I, I will talk a little bit about yeah. my philanthropic engagement mm -hmm. in, in India. First mm -hmm. of all, it's not a contribution. I consider that as an investment. Mm -hmm. They will yield exponential returns. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do not consider this as a charity. Okay. So in my village, I established two things. One of them is I'm, I came here to inaugurate Frank and Debbie Islam Health Clinic. Mm -hmm. A health clinic will be the place I was born in Kauragani. So that will be transformed into the health clinic so people can go out and get access to the, uh, uh, you know, the health care. Mm -hmm. and, and also I've established, uh, my, my mother's name is Kamrun Nessa. Mm -hmm. And so I've established a school called Kamrun Nessa. Mm -hmm. And I will be also... Mm -hmm. Uh, um, you know, inaugurating that, mm -hmm. and there's something called Frank Islam Square, which is the which is located not too far from my ancestors' village, which is in Nandao, which is a part of the UP, yeah. which is part of the Azamgarh. Mm -hmm. So there's a square there; the people can go there, listen and learn, and interface with the people, and stay there also. And then, the, my biggest contribution um, um, is, is to Aligarh Muslim University mm -hmm. uh, because I owe it to Aligarh Muslim University. Uh, so. I have given $3 million okay. uh, to Aligarh Muslim University. Well, and if you, I, I will tell you a little bit. But if you ever go there, mm -hmm. you, should, you should visit Frank and Debbie Islam Management Complex. Okay. It's the largest complex. It's a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. And when I inaugurated and I said it's not the building of a building, mm -hmm. it's the building of a foundation that will stand the test of the time. And from this management complex will come out the young leaders, the young entrepreneurs who will go out and make India a better place and also will create a job, build prosperity all over the world, hmm. which is what Sir Sayyid said when he established the um, uh, Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College in 1872. Yeah. And I also, I'm here hmm. because I'm going to Aligarh Muslim University next week to establish a Frank and Debbie Islam Auditorium, okay. which is the part of the mass communication, which is the School of Journalism. Very good. In addition to Aligarh Muslim University, my, my I believe in democracy and freedom of press because freedom of press is the cornerstone of uh, mm -hmm. any democracy. So I also get uh, Indian journalists mm -hmm. to come from um, uh, India to America for six months training in the School of Journalism mm -hmm. through the Alfred Press Friendly Partners. So this, this year, last year as a matter of fact, was a fellow came, Ghulam Jalani from Hindustan Times, from a graduate of Aligarh Muslim University came. Good, good. So it's, uh, you can say, a bright future for uh, Indian journalists also. I would hope there is a bright future for Indian journalists, uh, but the important thing for them to learn the values mm. and the character and conscience of a nation, mm. which is America, that has been a beacon of hope, just like India is, mm. and it's the largest, uh, in, India is the largest democracy, and, uh, and America is the oldest democracy, so those are the values that binds us together. You are uh, associated with Barack Obama also. How do you find uh, a person as a politician well, first of all, I admire and appreciate President Obama. Mm -hmm. And I came to India mm -hmm. with President Obama, mm -hmm. uh, I believe three or four years ago, when, we, when Prime Minister Modi asked him to be part of the uh, Republic Day in January. Yeah. So I came with him and, uh, and, uh, for two days. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I met uh, several people with him. Mm -hmm. So President Obama is a unique character, and his story can only happen in America. A black American, half black and half white, just like my story as a dark-skinned Indian Muslim yeah. and Indian, can, uh, I believe that America's inclusiveness and openness that provided the opportunity to succeed. Mm -hmm. And that's something India needs to do, is to bring the people together. Mm -hmm. And we have to rise above the angry partisanship and bring the people together. And bringing people, and we need to make sure there's no hatred and bigotry. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and there are some in, in, in the United States, but there's, there's a lot more people hatred and bigotry. We, this is why I believe in interfaith dialogue, mm -hmm. so we can bring the people together and also break the barrier of the bias the dividers. The lot that unite us, the little that divide us, our bonds are stronger than the differences that too often drive us apart. And uh, because being a Muslim and a Indian also, because you had a good taste of India also, what do you f find the uh, reasons and the points where Muslims lacking behind you? Well, I'm, my last name is Islam, so I'm either doubly blessed or doubly cursed. <laughs> but I believe I'm doubly blessed <laughs> okay. uh, because the, our faith, Islam, mm. stood, stands for equality, mm. dignity, mm. tolerance, and respect for other faith. Mm. And I find a peace in my faith. 
Uh, what Indian Muslims lag behind is several things. Uh, uh, the most important thing, they, they, they do not go to school. Mm -hmm. They have to get a good education mm -hmm. in the primary schools, K through 12 schools and middle school, their high school, then colleges and university, and then come to foreign country, then go to foreign country. That's the first thing they lack. Mm -hmm. I believe what other things they lack, obviously they confront hostility and a prejudice. Mm -hmm. They share a city but not a community. Mm -hmm. They share a common dwelling but not in a common effort. Mm -hmm. And we need to break the barrier of the biases. But the, uh, the way to do that, and in order for, for the Muslims to be part of the inclusive uh, economic mobility in India, and, and I will also say for India, if they use the potential of the, America, the Indian Muslims, Muslims. I believe that India will succeed. Mm. And that's the promise of the India's democracy mm. is to make sure that everyone succeed. Mm. And when the Muslims, which are the 200 million Muslims, which are the largest Muslim population, second largest Muslim population in the world, if they succeed, all of us succeed, India succeed, and the world succeed. Mm. The third thing that I would say to go back, to, uh, I talked, uh, I want to say also they have to be politically engaged mm -hmm. and civically engaged mm. to make sure that the they have their voice, they make sure they also can go vote, to make sure they have, they make, they, they're there to make a difference. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and also I think they should become an ambassador and a role model for the, for the younger generation because the younger generations, as I see it, is the hope of tomorrow. They are the promise and potentials of India and the world. So those are the things that's lacking behind. Mm -hmm. but, but it's not going to be solved in one day, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to take a Couple, many generations, but it will be there because I look at the brighter horizon when I endure storm. Inshallah, inshallah. Our Prime Minister used to say, Sabka saath, sabka vikas. Sabka. Yes, I know that because I wrote a column on it. Yeah, yeah. So, did you find that vikas, that development in Muslims also? Well, that's there the, is a clear cut discrimination. It, and I said that to you, and, uh, and I would say that the, it's just not the, uh, first of all, the Prime Minister is a very smart man. Mm -hmm. He's a pretty savvy guy. He's a, he's a very uh, talented individual. He speaks very well, but he has to match his word with his deeds, mm -hmm. <laughs> which in some cases has not been the case. And when I wrote the column uh, on Triple Talaq, and yeah. I, write, I just I wrote a column on the Indian Muslims mm -hmm. and, and the Muslim girls. Mm -hmm. Muslim girls, uh, have to be active participant in terms of education. Mm. And I think that they, we have to tap upon their potential mm. and they should not be confined uh, in just a four walls. And if we empower them with a good education, they will empower their children. And also this way they can get out of the trap of the poverty. So education also gets you out of the poverty because it's a powerful equalizer uh, to get uh, to be out of the poverty. Uh, I would say that the there's a lot. Uh, there's a there's a lot of miles to go before we go to sleep. <laughs> in terms of the in terms of the, but 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 we have to extend our our heart and hope to the people that we are in this together and together we can help shape a better future for India. Yeah. And that's a message that the Indian Muslim need to give it to uh, everybody, and including the Prime Minister, because he's a Prime Minister for all the people, mm -hmm. me and you and everybody. Yeah. And, and he needs to bring the people together. Uh, you work with Barack Obama, now the tenure is going to this, uh, Trump. What do you find the uh, differences? Uh, between the day and night. <laughs> 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 uh, Which one, uh, the day for you? Well, I'm not sure that I will comment. I'm, I'm in a foreign country, yeah. uh, but I would say that the President Obama brought people together. Okay. Uh, and he, uh, some of the some of the things, the signature thing he has done, and especially the uh, the Obamacare and also the affordable access yeah. uh, to make the healthcare, uh, you know, available for all Americans, and many many other things that got out of the war from Afghanistan also mm -hmm. and Iraq. So. Um, you know, President Trump is just still on the learning process, mm. and I do not agree with his policies in terms of the Muslim banning mm. and what he did. I think that was a completely wrong and unjustified because the Muslims are part and parcel of the of the of America and America's economy. 
Um, he doesn't really have any foreign policy yet. <laughs> okay. It's, it's still <laughs> being defined. Okay. And, uh, he's still so, in such. <laughs> well, we have to wait and see what happens. Yeah. And, uh, and I will, but he's, a, I met him a couple of times and mm -hmm. I think he's a very smart man. Obviously, he didn't become president of the United States. So I do have some differences in policy uh, in terms of bringing the people together. He has not done a good job and he will. And uh, I hope he does because his success, uh, uh, you know, our success is his success. Definitely. After 9-11, there has a word scenario changed. Muslim, oh. Muslims uh, seems like a terrorist. There has a doubt. What do you think? This doubt, did you find there also in America? Well, first of all, uh, that the, just because the, 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 you know, the people who took that plane and bombed uh, and, uh, you know, basically invaded and took that word back, a word uh, uh, that in New York and what other things they did, yeah. they were Muslim. Mm -hmm. They came from Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. They were Yemeni citizens. Uh, there has been some backlash because of that, but I would say that the most, uh, because their last name is Muslim, that doesn't necessarily mean all the Muslims are terrorists. Mm. Yeah, the course. Muslims, they're not, uh, those uh, word are not synonymous. Mm -hmm. Those are two. Uh, I believe <clears throat> and most, m most of the Muslims are part and parcel and fabric of the uh, United States of America. Mm. In, and they are the weave into the fabric of our nation. Mm. And, you know, it's also ignorance. Mm. Your job as a journalist mm. is in India also to fight against the ignorance. Mm. And so I would say that the uh, people recognize their contribution. In some cases, I would say, the Muslims are the very important and the doctors in the rural area mm. that you do not find anywhere else the people will go there. Mm -hmm. But still, we have to justify that we are not terrorists. No, well, the, the, the Muslims and terrorism is not synonymous word. Yeah. I totally agree with you because we are not mm. and we should not be treated that way. Of course, but it is not vanished. It is keep uh, whenever you go to any airport or any agency, they treated you like that only. Well, I, uh, well, that's the... And then, did you need any kind of certification from any agency that you are loyal towards your ca country? Well, that is, a, that is, a, in, no, it should not be. Yeah. And, uh, and in, for America and India both to succeed, uh, the Muslims and Hindus and Christians and all the people have to work together mm. because this is uh, just like in India and Indian Muslims, it is their country. Mm. And the same thing in America. Uh, I, I would say that if you talk to the people, there's a Democrat, there's a Republican. Yeah. So uh, I'm a Democrat and you are not, and I have a lot of friends uh, in the Democratic Party and the president was my friend. President Clinton is one of my best friends also. Mm -hmm. And many, many people, the Speaker of the House is a good friend of mine, which is Nancy Pelosi. So I do not think there's a backlash. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. there are two Muslims, mm -hmm. Congressperson mm -hmm. in the U.S. House a Representative in the United States. And there is a backlash there, but, but they stand up and they speak up, they step up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we have to continue to fight against the arrogance, mm -hmm. not the arrogance, but ignorance, yes. and to make sure that our voices are heard. And very recently, this uh, 2019 election is going to be held here. In, in India, yeah. Because uh, being an Indian, and you are the communist also, you know the things very well, what is happening here. And you visited many times and you used to visit here. What are you going to see? Uh, a change, yeah. a change agent. Yeah. Uh, I would say that the what I would like to uh, see is that the India uh, does several things. One is uh, the it becomes a beacon of hope for the democracy mm -hmm. and the diversity. Diversity brings people together, yeah. Yeah, and it is a we need to make sure we can build a stronger, fairer, and tolerant and inclusive society in India uh, because we are in this together. I would also, also like to see that the Indian Muslims and the minorities and Dalit and you know, the people who are left behind, people who are vulnerable, poor people who are, have uh, no voice, mm. people who are socially economically disadvantaged are less privileged. Mm. They should continue to be engaged politically, individually, as well as trying to bring the people together uh, because that is their country and we have been here for thousands of years. It is our country and but we need to take they, that they back. And count them as a voters only. They don't want to share their cheers. Well, but it is your job to speak up and step up and you are in the media. Yeah, keep doing it. 
Uh, you you should have, but you have to do, you have to match the words with your deeds. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that when you're successful and make other people successful, they will see you became successful and they will have the respect for you. And uh, it will take some time. Mm -hmm. You know, the minorities in the United States didn't do very well because they, uh, in, back in 1960s, black people could not even go to the white churches or yeah. go to the restaurant. Yeah. So it was a, so, but it took some time, but I think, I think we, we have a black person in the United States. So yeah. I would say that we will have a Muslim, a Dalit, a prime minister in, in India also one day. Mm. Last question. Sure. Do you have any other plan apart from Aligarh and Azagarh to set up something job oriented or for the specially a Muslim community's welfare? I mean, education and employment mm. and inclusive uh, mobility mm. uh, uh, not only brings the people together, they resolve the conflict and they build the peace. It's, a pe it's, a, it's also builds the peace because mm. the fact that they, if the Indian uh, Muslim youth or the, or, the, or the Dalits are, they do not have a job, uh, there will they, fuel frustrations and mm. desperations for mm. them. That's not what you want. Mm. I, I mean, somebody asked me the same question this morning, so I would say uh, I got some idea in terms of uh, creating a job for mm. the skill development, and mm. I, I will work with some, some people who have done this thing, some of my friends. Mm. And I would like to see in the rural areas, especially in Azamgarh and Banaras area, mm. which is where I came from, mm. uh, and then expand that, that to the... Uh, to the wider places, yes, mm. there's, there is a, there is a possibility. But you know, I have to live within the within the constraints mm. of the United States IRS uh, because uh, I have a stature there in the United States, and I want to do legal things. Mm. Uh, uh, we have a law that uh, if a recipient of my money has to be uh, also exempt, tax exempt by the by the United States government. So, mm. but there are some other entities, and I. I'll work on that. That's something you have given me thoughts and I'll work on it. In UP, there is one most important city called Lucknow. Yes, I'm they going there tomorrow. Lucknow. I'm going there tomorrow. Achha. So, what do you think about Lucknow? कुछ है आपके पास लखनऊ की तहजीब के बारे में कहने के लिए हमारे पास तो तहजीब नहीं है but you are most civilized person in the world I would say uh, in my speech tomorrow I intend to say uh, tomorrow day after tomorrow it is the place uh, where light of the learning mm -hmm. that you know is the is the place where the nawab was there जी so I would also say, as President Kennedy once said, that they let the, let the light of the learning penetrate deep into the darkness and light up the whole world. So mm. that's what Lucknow has to do, is to, is to broadcast and promote the light of the learning to the wider audience. Mm. And uh, there's no question that Lucknow uh, is, uh, has been and continues to be the light of the learning and the seat of the Nawab. It's a timeless city. Mm. Yeah. Any and Aligarh is, Aligarh is also a timeless city. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Any message for Muslim youth? Okay. Well, I, I will have a several messages for the, and I will speak to the camera, and I would say to the young people, you uh, do not be discouraged. Uh, you get a good education. Uh, help others when you're successful. Uh, you know, if other people are successful, then you'll be successful. Also, be a lifelong learner. Learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. Never ever give up. Never ever give up. Continue to do what you're doing, and the and the and also the most important thing is your, you, you know, uh, no hope should be high enough for you to achieve. No dream should be large enough for you to achieve. We are in this together. Be politically engaged, civically engaged. Make other people successful. Get a good education. Get a good job. Build prosperity and m m become a difference maker. And, and we will take a pride in you when you become successful. Thank you so much. It was nice talking yes, to you. Yes, yes, yes. So, this was Azam Gad Ke Azam, which has become an Azam in America. I hope that the young people who are our young people will also learn something from them and open their own path. The obvious thing is that if the story will come out, then it will go to a very far distance. So, don't stop in the direction. Keep going. The path will be the path. 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 The path will be the path.